All right, good morning. Um, this is just a little quick flip through of my art journals and a little bit of my process. Uh, let me give you a little bit of a background. My name is Debbie Epps. I'm a mixed media artist from Texas. I am self-trained. I have a father and a grandmother that were also self-trained. So I had early access to a lot of art uh, supplies and art books. I am certified to teach art in Texas. I don't teach art. I, art, I teach math and science to middle school. This is one of my first journals that's not in a composition notebook, but this could be easily done in a composition notebook. Um, basically, it's all collage, very little paint, and most of it is harvested from magazines. Um, these are file folders. And so I was just doing kind of a series and all of the girls have wings. And it's about color and pattern. Some are better than others. And it's uh, C. Lemon is who I watch to get the binding, but I'm just using clear tape. Most people use duct tape to bind the folders. Kathy Arbor is a really good artist also who's doing a lot of uh, journal work using folders, using monthly folders. She's a Canadian artist on YouTube. All right. And when I say mixed media, I use a lot of different mediums. Um, I don't tend to follow rules. There are a few rules that I always follow composition and hotspot type rules. Um, so this was the first comp book that I did. And here's the process that I used for the most part on all these journals. I did. I don't do one page at a time. I do what is called like a four pass system. So the first thing I did is I spray and use inks on all the pages. I use deli paper, like a wax paper to separate them when they're wet. And I usually work in sections of five or 10. Then when that's all done, then I come through and I do stencil, more paint and stamping. Then a third pass is usually collage and mark making. And then my final pass was focal image. On this one, um, I used a lot of sprays, a few ink pads for my first pass. Um, my final pass, they all have focal image because I was using it to kind of um, showcase some of my pre my other art. So I printed some of my own original art to use as focal images. And the last thing I do is cover the, the cover of the composition notebook when I'm all done. Um, I use my jelly plate. I'll tell you that is the best thing I have ever invested in besides stencils. So it is a combination of, like I said, paint and paper. I'm big on mixing up texture or patterns. This is just uh, distressed ink, oxide ink, and then through a stencil, and then I quit because I liked it. This has got, again, the inks. Then it's got jelly printed paper. And then I came back with some stencil work. You can see where I sprayed the inks, did the stencil work, collage. Not every page has uh, focal points added. 
Now, Journal Artista, Paula Phillips is another artist you can look at. And she does a lot more paint scraping. And hers started, and that's kind of where I got the idea, is just when she had extra paint, she would grab her composition notebook and scrape that extra paint. And eventually it would become a layout. And some I don't feel like they're done. Like this one is not done, but I was looking for backgrounds to a large degree. So some of these don't have focal in. Oh, this is the journal that doesn't have focal images. Sorry. I'm going to set this down. These are just backgrounds on this one. So most of these have two passes. Some have three. Using stencil mask. Napkin. Uh, this is tissue that I stamped on and then I can audition it before I actually add it. Tissue again. This a lot of this book is distressed oxide inks, the pads. They look like this. And I use this type of brush through a stencil. Or I put them on and spray them with water. Napkin. All right, so I'll just go quickly through this one. Because we've got some more to go through. I love that sound it makes. This one's even got some 3D. This one I was finishing up, and it's more of a scrapbook style. Not finished, not my favorite. Sometimes you have to work through the uglies. A blackout technique. This one's not done. Not done. I just don't like it. I'm going to do a blackout technique with an elephant. And you can make your own stencils. This is a stencil that I drew and cut by hand. I use page uh, binder dividers inexpensive I get eight for a dollar at the Dollar Tree this journal mostly was distressed oxides and stencil work all right so that's that one this is the one that has my artwork this is the one that I finished out with the uh, more collage. Um, quotes. But you can look deep into and see all the different layers when you look up close on a lot of them. This had a quote, no focal image. These include a lot more paint in them. I used acrylic inks and water in the very beginning as part of my sprays and inks. And I just get them wet, India ink. And I let it soak through the pages. 
these first two journals, I was gluing pages together. So they're two pages glued together. I do have videos showing um, a lot of this work. They're longer videos because they are lives. So I know this is a, flat, a fast flip through, but there are videos that you can go and look at if you're more interested in seeing how I built most of the different layers. They'd be on multiple vi videos because again, it wasn't done and I didn't just sit down and do a page. All right, that's the end of that one. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you, I'm not, I'm not going to do a flip through. There are very little in them. Um, this is one I'm using where I find photographs I like, and then I'm doing like color swatch ideas based on those photographs. So I find a picture I like, I put a background in, and then I find my own materials and supplies and paints and do color swatches just to kind of get some alternative ideas or draw something you can think of like design seeds this is one i've started but i've barely done anything in i did mark making i did some marker and water it's got very little um then what i'll end up doing is come back in with stencils and i'll add paper this is the current one i'm working in and the one i'm most excited about so i've already put a cover on it because i was doing a project um where i wired all these buttons on the front and i've actually cheated and I, I didn't well i did the first pass all the way through so all of the passes have the first layer of ink most of it was distressed oxides and what i did was i'll start at the back it's color by color family so i went in the pinks then the yellows then the blues then the greens then i have a little bit mixed up and then i have some neutrals in the back that i'm going to do and after I got the ink on there and it was all wet and dried again, then I came back and I did collage. So I moved my collage bits up to the second step. Then the third step was to add some stencil work. And then the final step is to kind of blend that with more stencil work. So these don't have a lot of collage. They just have small bits. In fact, those bits may disappear. They usually drive the secondary color. There's some paper in here. There's some paper in here. This is kind of inspired by Mary Beth Shaw of Stencil Girl, who sells stencils. And you can see like there's just bits of paper here and there just to add some different texture. 
on this one i did collage some paint chips because i felt like it needed something to calm it down these in the front are finished this is, you can see where i like this is where i've stopped but here i've got some layers so now i'm kind of bouncing around and the first thing i like to do is put a tone on tone stencil pattern and then i'll add a secondary so on this one i've got this red then i'll probably come in with some cream and some black and i'm trying to use very organic stencils this one's done this one's done this one's probably done done again i'm looking at them as backgrounds not necessarily finished art pieces always done um and then i'm also using them as an inspiration so this one ended up when i liked it so well and i had enough materials that i turned it in to a cover for a vinyl bag so i took medical tissue and did the whole process on a pattern and then attached it to a vinyl bag so that's kind of how i sell my work is either digital or these ideas can get translated into an actual art piece to sell or used in a, a larger piece. So that's kind of how I'm using this journal. And this is the journey that I am on right now. So thanks for hanging out. Have a great school year.